My name is Michael and for the past three years, together with my wife Sarah, I've been making Ultimate Frisbee highlight videos. As I've made more and more videos, I've learnt a lot about how to do things, what works and what doesn't work. I'm no expert and I'm definitely still learning, but I do know a thing or two. And this video is the first video in a series where I talk you through our complete process of making highlight videos, from start to finish. If you've never picked up a camera before, or if you're a seasoned veteran, or you're somewhere in between, hopefully by the end of this series you'll have everything you need to know to start making your own highlight videos. Before we get stuck in though, we have a few housekeeping items. Firstly. This is going to be a course where we discuss things from the ground up, so if you already have experience with photography or videography, some of the things that we discuss will probably be pretty familiar to you. You might also be interested in some parts of the process and not others. Whatever the case, I want to stress that you don't have to watch this course from beginning to end if you don't want to. Feel free to just cherry pick the sections that are valuable to you. Secondly, this is not just a video course. We've put together a lot of additional resources to help you along the way. There's a link in the description of each video to our additional resources that contains cheat sheets, additional information, and other tools that you might find useful. I've been making highlight videos for a while now, so I have a fair idea of what works and what doesn't work. I'm definitely still learning though, so one of the resources that will be included in this document is a corrections or addendums. After I've filmed and posted these videos, I can't easily change them, but I'll still be learning as I make more and more videos. So if I discover better ways of doing things or anything that can be improved, I'll update the addendums document. After you watch each section of this course, I recommend that you look through the relevant section of the addendums document to see if there are any changes or improvements or any additional information. Like I said at the start, this course contains our process for making highlight videos. I want to stress that just because we do things a certain way, that doesn't mean that you have to do things exactly the same way. With a lot of these things, there's no right or wrong way to do things, so if you have different tools at your disposal or different creative ideas, or you just want to do something different to us because you think it might be better, go for it. Our goal with this course is to help people make highlight videos, not to force people to do exactly what we do. So use this course as a guide and feel free to do things your own way. And that's all the housekeeping items. Uh, with that out of the way, let's have a look at what we're going to learn over the next seven videos. First up, we've got a quick intro to Ultimate just in case you're new to the sport. Then we're going to talk through all of the equipment that we use to make our videos. The cameras, lenses, tripods and all the other bits and bobs. Next, we're going to talk through the ways that we recommend setting up that equipment to capture highlights in the best way. What camera settings to use, where to set up the tripod, etc. We're going to explain what we do before the day to get ready and what we do on the day to film those sweet, sweet highlights. We're then going to explain our process for managing all of the footage, finding the right music, and editing all of the clips together into a complete highlight video. Without further ado, let's get into it. The last item on this video's agenda is a videographer's intro to Ultimate. If you're already familiar with Ultimate and how it works, feel free to skip this and jump straight into the next video. If you're new to Ultimate, brace yourself for an introduction to what is, in my definitely unbiased opinion, one of the best sports to ever exist. Ultimate is played on a football-sized field which is split into a central zone and two end zones. To start each point, players line up on their goal lines and the defensive team throws the disc as far as they can toward the offensive team. This opening throw is called the pull. After that, the offensive team moves towards the disc and moves the disc up the field by passing it between themselves. They can't run with the disc and they can't hold the disc for more than 10 seconds at a time. A team scores a point by catching the disc in the end zone, but if the disc is intercepted or touches the ground at any point, the defense becomes offense and they're trying to score in the other end zone. Ultimate is a pretty unique sport in that it is self-refereed all the way up to the highest level of ultimate. That means that at any point you might hear someone on the field yell something and then everyone just stops playing. This happens when someone thinks there's been a breach of the rules. The players will then sort out what's happened and resume play. It's everyone's responsibility in Ultimate to play with fairness and integrity and that is wrapped up in something that Ultimate players call the spirit of the game. One important thing to note for anyone on the sideline, including us, is that there's a 3 meter perimeter around the field that should be kept clear at all times. So if you get asked to move at some point, it could be that you're too close to the fields. Ultimate is normally played to 15 points or until 90 minutes elapses, whichever comes first. If one team reaches 15 points before 90 minutes is up, then the game will finish early, or if neither team reaches 15 after 90 minutes, then the game will go on for a couple more points and then stop, and whichever team has more points after that wins. 
Sometimes, depending on the event, the time or points cap might be slightly different. If both teams stop playing randomly after a point, that's probably half time, which happens after one team reaches eight points. After the game, the teams will come together for what's called a spirit circle, which is where both teams stand on one big circle and discuss the game. Depending on the teams and the tournament, the teams might also play a quick fun game with the opposition. There's obviously a lot more to Ultimate than that quick intro, but that should be everything that you need to get up to speed. And with that, that is the end of the video. I'll see you in the next video where we'll be talking about all the equipment that we use to make our videos.